in the not too distant future next sunday ad there was a guy named joel not too different than you or me he worked in a satellite loading bay just polishing switches to pay his way he did his job well with a cheerful face but his bosses didn't like him so they shot him in the space Send cheesy movies The worst ever made Joe says when you got lemons You make lemonade Now keep in mind he can't control When the movies begin or end Because he used the extra parts To make his robot friends Robot roll call camera Servo, Gypsy, Crow. If you're wondering how he eats and breathes and other science facts, just to beat yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. For Mystery Science Theater 3000. Hey, hi everybody. This is, my name is Joel Hodgson. This is Crow. Oops, sorry. And we're on the satellite of love. We're marooned in outer space. Cambot, you can bring it in a little bit. And it's frustrating because it's Thanksgiving, you know. At least we got to see the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, you know. Yes, I noticed they're still using that underdog balloon. Uh, say, does he get residuals for that? No, Crow. Underdog is a cartoon character. Nobody gets residuals for being an overinflated caricature filled with hot air. What about Geraldo? <laughs> now that's funny. It is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, we got movie sign. Today's movie is Re Revenge of the Mysterians from Mars. It's filmed in super marionation. You go through. We got to go around. Let's cheese it, Crow. First picture transmission starts in 35 seconds. Thirty seconds. I must have spotted it. What's the flight profile look like? Right on target. Twenty-one thousand miles from Mars. 
Hey, Carl. Hey, 20 seconds. Start transmission countdown. Have we done it? We won't know for nearly four minutes. Mars is about 43 million miles away. It'll take that long for the signals to reach us. That is, if the Mestrons haven't already destroyed the satellite. I'll report to cloud base. Right. What's the latest situation, Captain Blue? We're at K-14 Observatory. The satellite should have started transmitting. We're waiting for the first pictures. Thank you, Captain Blue. Keep me informed. SIG, Colonel. How do you rate our chances, Captain Scarlet? Well, it's hard to deceive the Mysterons, but there's always a chance. Signal to noise ratio 0124 dB. Definition positive. Good. Check video. Video check, positive. Beam width and flux density, A-OK. -okay. Check all primary circuits. Computer feed out, primary circuits, positive. Well, we'll soon know now. Check video. I just did. We'll do it again. It's getting pretty tense. Yes, a lot of time and effort has gone into this project. No one's had much sleep these last three days. Video oh, check am. positive. Well, we can sleep through Signal's the movie. Signal's still strong. It's not being jammed. They got a satellite dish like you wouldn't believe. It's only a matter. Somebody just made a putt. Close-ups of Mars. 43 million miles across space to that screen. Twenty seconds. Stand by. Start video recording. Fifteen seconds. Now. Here they come. Five. Four. Three. We've lost the signal. Check it. No possible doubt. It's been destroyed. Two seconds before the first picture transmission. The Mr. Rons have destroyed the satellite. Phase one complete according to plan. This is the voice of the Mr. Rons. We know that you can hear us, Earthmen. The eye that dares to look upon our planet has been destroyed. You will never succeed. You will never discover the secret of the Mr. Ons. We will be avenged. Feels like we're really here, Crow. Wow, it does. Ooh. Open all internal circuits, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Members of Spectrum, as you have heard, the first satellite launched to orbit Mars and relay pictures to Earth has been destroyed by the Mistrons. This was, of course, anticipated, and the operation will continue as planned. Why as K-14 Observatory is at present beyond the range of the Angel aircraft, you say something? Cloud Base will travel immediately to a position 50 miles west of the observatory in the Himalayas. From there, we will maintain aerial surveillance. For the next 24 hours, all Spectrum personnel are on red alert. This exercise is part of a larger plan, Operation Sword, and we must succeed. That is all. Lieutenant Green? Yes, sir? Start horizontal jets. like we're 
are underway. Maximum safe cruise, Colonel. Look at the right. jacuzzi. Lieutenant, gone. set a course 142 magnetic. And maintain present speed. Phase two has begun. Looks like Buck Hill. <laughs> the wearing his face. Hey, look, look. Ooh. What is it? It's a... I hope it's one of ours. I have the mini satellite under infrared track. Here it comes again. Here it goes. Touchdown in two minutes. Let's hope the Mr. Ons don't detect this one. Let's hope well, they have a strong defense. By infrared reflection of the sun's rays from the satellite shell. At least there's no transmission for them to pick up. Uh oh. Flying meatball. Ten o'clock. It's working perfectly. Right on target. Minisat Five is keeping the Martian moon between itself and the Mysterons. I've got a feeling it's going to make it. Rose have fired. It's altered course as scheduled. It's a transformer. It's heading straight for us. Oh, look out. Oh. That was a close one. Oh, yeah. Kind of looks like Cambot, doesn't it? Ooh, it does. It's landed. We've done it. Wonderful. Well, we've succeeded. We've soft landed a small satellite on the Martian moon Phobos. And without the Mysterons detecting it. Right. Phobos orbits Mars every seven hours, 40 minutes. And our minisat will get a free ride right round the planet. Every seven actually. seconds, it will take a photograph. These will be relayed back to us at 0300 hours tonight, after it's completed one orbit. Gentlemen, we're about to obtain the best close-up shots of Mars ever taken by man. We have a lot of work ahead, and I suggest we all get some rest. Get some sleep as well, Captain Blue. I'll take the first watch. Right. Why do you I'll think they you call him midnight. Captain Blue? His language? I think so. I'm amazed they got Cary Grant to do the voice for this guy. It's taking pictures, Carl. Uh, that's the. Really keep it clean in there. No, uh, what's going on here? Hmm? Shh. Hmm. Come on over here. Hmm.
there. It's only me. Uh, sorry if I startled you. Oh, Dr. Brack, I thought you were in bed. Well, I, uh, I couldn't sleep. What time is it? Nearly midnight. Three hours to go. The night's so clear. Uh, may I? Go ahead. I was stargazing myself before you came in. Mars, uh, the red planet. Seems Will like a nice enough color. Mm. It was a brilliant At idea first. to soft land the mini set <laughs> on Phobos. Yes, its course was carefully plotted so that Phobos always shielded the satellite from Mars. That's why the Mysterons didn't locate it. Yes. Well, you might say we worked in the shadow of fear. Fear? Yes. Phobos, the uh, Greek word for fear. The shadow of fear. Mm. Everything all right? Yes, Captain Blue. Well, it's midnight. I'll take over the watch, Captain Scarlet. Right. I'll get some sleep. I suggest you get some rest as well, Dr. Breck. All right, Captain. I think I will try and get an hour or so. I'm going to check outside. Good night. Good night, Captain. Doesn't Captain Blue look kind of like Glenn Campbell? A little bit, yes. A little bit country. Strange. A little bit rock and roll. <laughs> He's a puppet stone cowboy. Hmm. Intense. I, I can't. Sounds post like. Sating light. Two syllables. Should have bought a vowel. The Olympics rings. Ooh. What big zippers you have. <laughs> Funny, his legs don't move like a human. Dr. Breck, the shampoo genius, that's it. He does have nice hair. What's our position, Lieutenant Green? We're overflying the Himalayas, about eight miles west of the observatory. Time? 0158. Just over an hour to go. Right, Lieutenant. Launch all angels. Angel one, immediate launch. Angels 2 and 3, immediate launch. That must be Charlie. Maintain <laughs> aerial surveillance as instructed. Observe radio silence, except in an emergency. Here it goes. All angels skyborn, sir. All we can do now is wait. The rest is up to the astronomers. Gone? He can't have gone. I've looked everywhere. He's not in the observatory. He must be found. There's less than an hour before transmission. His bed hasn't been slept in. Dr. Breck is definitely not in the building. I don't like it. We're so close to success. Nothing must go wrong. But there's another hour and a half to the movie. Something has to. <laughs> Rotation gear housing, it's filled with uh, hula hoops, right? <laughs> You're a cut up. It's the bubble bomb. 
Do you want to see my impression of that? Hey, that's pretty good. Thank you, I've been practicing. That's the position, Colonel. And there's less than 40 minutes to go. Breck is almost certainly in the hands of the Mistrons. But we must go ahead with the project. Hmm. I will order the Spectrum helicopter to fly as low as possible over the area, in the hope that it may spot him. Meantime, carry on with the preparations for the transmission. SIG. He can't have gone far, Captain Blue. We'll go outside and try and find him. Come on, Angelini. Let's get to the computer. What the hell is that? Not a computer. I'm glad there's a moon. That's for sure. Let's get a Mr. On detector from the SPV. Test transmission in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, zero. Bang on the nose. We're in business. Could you get a fix on the beam width and flux density? Yes. We'll have to move the aerial point one, two degrees. Right. We wait till the last minute, just in case the Mr. Rons are trying to pinpoint our position. He could be anywhere. Right. But we better keep looking. Time's running out. Start transmission countdown. Imagine all the stations they can be on. That could be him. Captain Skyler, I think Captain Gray has located Brad. We're going round for another look. Mm, doggy. He's in the rocks above the observatory. SIG Melody. Well, Captain Blue, he's in the rocks above us. Let's go. Check video. Video positive. We'll traverse the aerial at transmission minus 40 seconds. We know you're up there, Brick. All right, we're coming to take you. Oh, they got me. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Don't be stupid, Brick. Give up before it's too late. It's already too late for you, Earthmen. What does that mean? I've planted a bomb in the radio telescope's rotation gear. When it's turned, the observatory will be blown to pieces. You will never beat us. <laughs> he got We've him. got to warn them. <laughs> There's no time. We must try. You know, that puppet does his own stunts. Does he really? Stand by to rotate aerial. Mm, I personally don't believe that puppets should be on TV. Five seconds. Rotate aerial. Don't do it. Picture transmission in 30 seconds. Oh, that looks like the same bomb. This time we're gonna do it. Mmm, doggy.
Okay, come here. Hey, Gypsy, come on over here. Yeah, come here. Okay, do you see these gourds I got here? Okay, now these gourds are what we usually put in a cornucopia, okay, back on Earth. Yeah, a cornucopia is this thing that's kind of shaped like a horn, like, you're not getting this, are you? Wait a minute, just come on, come on over here, put your head down. Can I use your mouth to demonstrate what a cornucopia is? Okay, yeah, a cornucopia. It's also known, just open your mouth up, that's good. It's also known as a horn of plenty. And around Thanksgiving time on Earth, we take these horn of plenties and fill them up with gourds and put them around kind of as a centerpiece. Yeah, to show people that it's been a good year, that we've had plenty. I think you're starting to get it, you know that? Hello, Joel Hudson. Hey, Crow. Giving Gypsum another one of your famous food rubs? No, no, good one, Crow. You're getting better. No, it's nothing like that. I'm making a Gypsum's mouth into a horn of plenty. It's a way uh, of showing on Earth that we've had enough. I think Gypsum just invented a way to show she's had enough. Right. Are you okay? Okay, we'd, we're going to break for a commercial now. Um, why don't you go make a sandwich or something? Ooh. All right. Ooh. Damn it. Commercials were pretty good. K14 Observatory has been completely destroyed. There is no chance of there being any survivors. Jackie Gleason. <laughs> this Did you is see his face? Mm. Since man's first successful landing on the moon back in the 1970s. We have gradually learned to live on this barren, apparently uninviting 1970s. world in safety and comfort. At present, there are some 4,000 men and women living and working on the lunar surface. The Earth is engaged in a savage war of nerves with the Mysteron. This is none of our doing, and we want no part of it. I wish to announce that I have been able to contact the Mysterons, to communicate with them, and come to a peaceful settlement. This is not our fight. The moon does not take sides, but we will not support the Earth against the Mysterons. How was the transmission? It seemed fine. Ask the computer, sir. How was the transmission, Sid? Transmission strength and definition excellent. Predict reception around the moon and on Earth exceptional. That sounded like my second grade teacher. <laughs> and members of Spectrum, you have all heard or read last night's transmission by the lunar controller, in which he declared the moon an independent world. Is he legally entitled to do this, Colonel? We are not concerned with the legality of the situation, Captain. The Spectrum's main purpose is to counter the Mr. On threat. That is our basic function. One part of the Lunar Controller's announcement was of particular significance. 
Lieutenant Green will read the relevant section. Quote, I have been able to contact the Mr. Arts. Hey, is to that a Grateful Dead them, pin he's got on? Peaceful settlement. <laughs> Unquote. I think it is. Can we believe Not what that he says, Colonel? Shoulder. I don't know, Captain Blue. <laughs> but I do know that we cannot afford to disbelieve it. Spectrum would be very interested to come to terms with the Mistrons. If the Lunar Controller has succeeded, we want to know how. If he hasn't, we want to know the reason for his deception. Could he be a Mistron agent, sir? This cannot be ruled out, Captain. Doesn't he look like the man from Glad? But there Glad? is only one place we nice will find hair, the answer. Buddy. In Lunaville 7. XK-5 to control. Internal countdown complete. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Stand by for liftoff. This movie needs more countdowns in it. <laughs> I just cannot get enough. Joe? Hmm. Joe? What? How come you gave me such a funny voice when you made me? It reminded me of my second grade teacher. Good answer, Joe. Height 20,000 feet. Hey, nice hat guy. Speed 6.5 miles per second. Escape velocity. Well, we're on our way. SIG, Captain Scarlett. We are leaving the Earth's atmosphere. Accelerate to 100,000 MPH. Boy, that moon looks like Jackie Gleason, doesn't it? Mm hmm Colonel White, XK-3 is in orbit around the moon. Lunar rocket separation in four minutes. Right. Put me in direct contact with Captain Scarlet. S.I.G. This is Colonel White. As the lunar controller has banned personal radios and all other equipment, I'll give you your final instructions now. Yes, Colonel. We have reports that a new unauthorized complex is being what? constructed in the Humboldt Sea on the far side of the moon. This must be investigated. I have the map reference, sir. We'll do everything possible. I don't have to tell you how important this assignment is. The future of the world may well be in your hands. Do you all understand? Look, Joe, I'm a lever. S.I.G. Captain Blue. S.I.G. Captain mm -hmm. Scott. S.I.G. The Spectrum personnel in the moon rocket have left the parking orbit. They will dock at Bay 3 in four minutes. Thank you, Sid. Go and meet them, Orson. This is their first visit to the moon. And their last controller? Yes, Orson. It could well be their last. Ha, ha, ha. Get away from the blast. Let's get into the airlock. Get it, Joe. Get it. The walkway is in position. Open the outer door. Right. Opening now. My name's Orson. I'm the Lunar Controller's PA. We would like to see the Lunar Controller as soon as possible. I'll take you to him immediately. Please wear these recognition discs. May I welcome you to Lunarville 7? Thank you, sir. We're glad to be here. You have already met my personal aide. Let me introduce our control computer. His code name is Sid. Speech Intelligence Dakota. He is programmed to understand and obey verbal instructions and can answer with his own simulated voice. Say hello, Sid. Good day, Captain Scarlet. Good no. day, hello, Captain Sid. Blue. Good day, Lieutenant Green. He recognizes you by the badges you're wearing. Ask him a question. Go ahead. What is the outside temperature? Two degrees centigrade, 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 275.16, absolute. Very thorough. Yes, Sid controls everything in Lunaville. The air conditioning, airlocks, power supplies. 
Even the, the brat. rockets and moon mobiles. <laughs> a very important piece of equipment. Assembled entirely on the moon by our own technicians. But designed and developed on Earth. The Earth may have helped us, but now we are self-reliant, democratic and free. Understand? Well, uh, <laughs> forgive me, gentlemen. I... He's kind of... Uh, now, I was told yes. you have a message from the world president. Yes, sir. He asked me to hand you this letter personally. Thank it's you. from Ed McMahon. Study it and give you my answer. Mm, if there is anything you need, one. please ask Orson. Scott Bale. Well, gentlemen, I'm at your service. As this is our first visit, we would appreciate a trip out on the lunar surface. Certainly. Sit. Right this way. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Orson. Have a moonmobile ready at airlock number three immediately. The moonmobile will be available at airlock three at once. If you will follow me, gentlemen. This would be good. Please fasten your safety belts. The unusual motion can be disturbing until you become used to it. That is unusual. It's kind of out of gas. Oh, give me it's a break. It's a novel method of transportation and surprisingly smooth. The Earth's gravity is six times stronger than the moon's. A machine like this would be useless on Earth. The force of impact on landing would be too great. Look, another lunar station. Lunarville 4. Most of our food is grown there. That must use a great deal of water. The moon has no natural water. At first, all supplies were transported from Earth, but the component elements, hydrogen and oxygen, and are geez. present on the moon. We can now synthesize more than enough for our own needs. Let's see. If I remember the map correctly, our present course would take us to the Humboldt Sea. What is your interest in that area? Oh, a natural curiosity. It's on the far side of the moon, never visible from Earth. It's 200 miles away. We have plenty of time. I'm afraid not. We would appreciate... No. I I'm sorry. Maybe another time. It's late. We should return to Lunaville 7. Something is afoot. I think it's the thing on the end of your leg. <laughs> you sure are funny for an ugly robot. I love that. This will be your suite for the duration of your stay. Looks like a George Jetson house. <laughs> Gene, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be most comfortable. I'll leave you then. You must be tired. If the earth light is too bright, the control for the polarity window is near the door. Did you notice his reaction when you mentioned the Humboldt Sea? Hold it. I think I'll just take a look around. The room is probably bugged. Keep talking. You know, I found that trip in the Moonmobile most interesting. I never realized how complex the installations on the it's Moon are. It's down were. here. It's down here. Lieutenant Green, do you agree? Yes. The synthesis of water from its component elements must have been a great breakthrough. How many people do you think the Moon is capable of supporting? Well. All the elements vital to human life are found on or near the lunar surface. So I think the number is very high. I think I found it. Keep quiet. Good night, Orson! Ah! Right. <laughs> I think we can now discuss the situation without being overheard. Who says what puppets it, don't have a sense Scarlet of humor? Discovered the microphone. I, I would never say me. that. Let them make their futile plans. I have programmed Sid to accept only my authorization. 
He will keep all exits sealed. Let them plot, Orson. They're trapped on Lunaville 7. We will deal with them at our leisure. Maybe after a jacuzzi. Identify yourself, or I must sound the alarm. I am Captain Scarlet. Thank you, Captain Scarlet. Can I help you? I require a moonmobile immediately. I am sorry. Your recognition bit cannot authorize a moonmobile. Well, who has the authority? In the present emergency, only the lunar controller. Emergency? The lunar controller has declared a state of emergency. Lunarville 7 has been evacuated. All except Class C instructions need his authorization. I see. I'll ask for his permission when he wakes. This would be in order. Good rest, Captain Scarlet. Good night, Sid. Good night, Sid. Good night, Sid. Who said? Captain Blue, wake up. What? What is it? The Lunar Controller has declared an emergency. Lunaville 7 has been evacuated. Well, it nice looks like he's a Mr. On agent. Blue. If only we had a Mr. On detector, we could be sure. Yes, but we'd never have been allowed to land with one. Well, what do you suggest? We must get a moonmobile and check out the Humboldt Sea. The answer may be there. Easier said than done. I'll take care of it. Wake Lieutenant Green and meet me at airlock 3. to let us out. I'll explain later. You think you can handle the controls? Yes, I'll manage. Lieutenant Green, have you got that map reference? Yes, Captain Scarlet. Right. You will act as navigator. Yes, I G. Let's go. He sure is bossy. Let's go to the hub. Thank you. What's our ETA at the Humboldt Sea? Oh, 400 hours. Two hours. We might just have time to get back before the lunar controller discovers we're gone. He's got a pack of Marlboros. Hunk a hunk of burning moon rock. Absolutely nothing. Another ten minutes, then we'll start back. I thought I saw a light. Where? About two miles ahead. Fifteen degrees to port.
I don't see anything. Wait. Look. There it is again. Yes. It's coming from a small crater. Must be here. It's marked but unnamed crater 101. Let's get over there and it's investigate. It's you, Joe. What can it be? From the amount of dust, there's a lot of activity down there. We'll soon know. Stop the moon reveal. Looks like a giant pinball machine. Those vehicles, they're moving in such strange patterns. You're the electronics expert, Lieutenant. What do you think? They must be unmanned. The pattern is a complicated program. They've been programmed to carry out a set task. They seem to be building something. What's the Lieutenant? There's no possible doubt. Exactly as the film from the MEV on Mars showed it. A Mr. On Complex, and it looks near completion. We've seen enough. We must get back to Lunaville 7 and report this to Cloud Base. <laughs> Looks like they're microbrewery. They can't have gone. I assure you, sir. When? How? I don't know. I went into their room. I'm not interested in details. Send out every available man. They must be found. You ordered the evacuation of Lunaville 7, sir. Everyone's left. The Moonmobile has just stopped at Bay 3. Captain Scarlet, Captain Blue, and Lieutenant Green have entered Lunaville 7. They've come back. Of course. Bring them here at once. Yes, sir. What they have seen must never get back to Earth. Bring them here. There's no need, Lunar Controller. On the assumption that his first note would be rejected and subject to our investigation, the World President authorized me to place you under close arrest and escort you back to Earth. Arrest me? You are fools, Earthmen. Already a complex is being built. Soon the Mr. Ant will come to take over the moon and then the Earth. We have seen the complex and it will be destroyed. No, you will never leave the moon alive. Any of you. Sid, prepare a lunar rocket Thanks. for immediate launch. We are leaving at once for the Earth. Don't waste your breath. The lunar rocket is ready at Bay 3. No. Sid, this is the lunar controller. Seal all exits. Come on. Sid, <laughs> I am giving you an order. Get it? Orson, seize them. Seal? <laughs> Never mind. Let's go. I command you. Seal all exits. It's no good, oh, okay, Lunar Controller. Sid cannot identify I you. I figured you would. I changed recognition discs with you last night. Sid, this is a Lunar Controller. Stop them. Seal all exits. I'm sorry. Your recognition disc cannot authorize that. Obey. Obey. Seal all exits. I am sorry. Your recognition disc does not authorize that. Into the airlock. The rocket's ready for launch. This is your last chance, Sid. Seal all exits. I am sorry. No recognition this. I am sorry. I hate the side of oil. What is that? Ooh. Come on, let's get out of here. Thank you, friends. Obey. All right, already. You know there was an op switch demo. <laughs> Sorry that you had to see that. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> I'm all choked up. There goes that microbrewery. I only hope they get the writer. Take off. There's still a little cone in front of me. 
Yay. Stop the picture. There's no possible doubt that shot proved conclusively. Looks like a bunch of giant martinis on the side of the moon. Houses a Mr. On complex. Yes, Colonel. We were shot. I think the gin and tonic. Must, of course, be destroyed as soon as possible. When do we leave, sir? Wait, there's something else. Here's the plan. It has been decided to divide the operation into two distinct assignments. Two assignments, Colonel? Yes, Captain Blue. The second is to destroy the Mr. On complex. Arrangements have been made with the Lunar authorities to carry this out. And the first? The first is more dangerous. It involves a calculated risk of the first magnitude. Combing your hair? If we try to destroy that complex, presumably no, the Mr. Ons will chair. use their powers to reconstruct it. Therefore, it has been decided to send a volunteer party into Crater 101, into the Mistron complex. Objective, to find and remove the power source from the complex. Right, you've all had time to consider. As I said, this assignment is on a volunteer basis. Your decisions can be made in the strictest confidence. I'm ready to go, sir. Thank you, Lieutenant. As the electronics expert, you will play a vital part in the operation. Count me in, sir. Thank you, Captain. I know I can rely on you. Well, Colonel, I am due for 48 hours furlough in Miami. But I couldn't really relax knowing the kind of trouble these two would get into without me. <laughs> I'm ready, Colonel. He Thank he you, Captain Scarlet. Well, gentlemen, no one knows who or what you will find inside that complex. All that remains for me to do is to wish you luck. That gives me a headache. This is a scale model of Crater 101 and the surrounding area. It was built up from extensive aerial reconnaissance over the past few days. What do we know about the vehicles which were building the complex? They are unmanned lunar vehicles, programmed to carry out the task. This larger one controls the operation. We don't know how or when all this was started. The lunar controller was a Mistron agent. The secret died with him when Lunaville 7 was destroyed. Well, the plan of attack is obvious. Knock out the control vehicle, then tackle the complex. We have decided to use a low-yield atomic device to destroy the complex after you have had time to investigate it. Good. When do we leave? At once. You will travel by Moonmobile. The journey glasses. will take two hours. Are the arrangements Look for the like atomic swimming device goggles. finalized, Fraser? Yes, Miss Nolan. I will follow the Moonmobile in a lunar in tank swim? carrying the bomb. This will be positioned in the crater and the detonator set for midnight, standard Earth time. Good. That gives you six hours, Captain Scarlet. Two to get Ooh. to Crater 101, and four hours to remove the power source and get clear. Right, we're on our way. Captain Scarlet. Yes, Miss Nolan? I'd, I'd like you to take this. It's a lucky charm. I'm not really superstitious, but please take it. To Linda Nolan, the CB-29 Neptune Pro, July 10th, 2058. We made it ahead of schedule. I remember. You were the project controller on the first Neptune probe launched from the moon. Yes, Captain Blue. Let's hope we're as successful. Be careful, Captain. Don't worry. We intend to come back. Let's go. I need to go do some radiator maintenance. A brave man. Very good looking. Who? Captain Scarlet. Yes, I suppose so. I didn't really notice. Yes, Miss Nolan. ETA Crater 101, 55 minutes. It's time for you to leave, Fraser. Yes, Miss Nolan. Remember. Set the detonator for midnight SET. 
We must give them time to get clear. Fraser? Fraser, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Your instructions will be carried out. If the turkey comes out of his hole and sees his shadow, that means we have six more weeks of Easter? Uh, no, Crow, it's not like this. Back at my house when I was on Earth, we would have Thanksgiving dinner around 2 o'clock, have mashed potatoes, turkey, yams, the whole shebang. Then around uh, dinner time, around 6 or 7, we'd have turkey sandwiches even if we weren't hungry. Then uh, later that night, my mom would cut up the turkey some more and put it in Tupperware for the drive home. And for breakfast, uh, turkey crisp cereal. Right. <laughs> I'm right? Uh, you see, that time I was trying to be funny. <laughs> no, no. I'm never going to catch on. <laughs> Crow, I was just kidding. I was just getting into it. Like, uh, I would say, uh, cocoa-flavored Thanksgivings. You get it? <laughs> oh, very funny, Joe Hudson. Uh, don't forget <laughs> Kellogg's beaks and feet. <laughs> right, or, or raisins, rice, and giblets. Hi, sir. Stop it, buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, things that are in a mattress? Uh, things that have to might eat for dessert. Hmm, uh, things that Dick Clark might say in his sleep. No, toasted turkey trot, sir. Uh, things you might say on a TV show if you were trying to take up time. Uh, Malto turkey. Uh, things you might eat for breakfast the day after Thanksgiving if you were just kidding. Right. Hey, you got I'm it. a winner. Well, we got movie sign, oh, you guys. We got to get out of here. Cheese it. Ah. I am aboard the lunar tank and ready to leave. Right. Report in an hour, Faser. Retracting walkway now. Hey, Crow. Hey, Servo. Hmm. He's big. He could use a Q-tip, too. <laughs> I have Captain Scarlet on the interspace radio link, sir. Good. Let me speak to him. Captain Scarlet? Yes, Colonel. We're about to cross the lunar horizon. We will then be on the far side of the moon from Earth, and we'll lose all radio contact. I understand, Captain. What's the latest situation? When we arrive at the crater, we will immobilize the control vehicle and then enter the complex. After our investigation, the whole area will be destroyed at midnight, standard Earth time. SIG, Captain. Report back as soon as the radio link is restored. What's SIG? Uh, Sig. What are their chances, sir? Sig. They Thank cannot you. He gets Captain. a cigarette if he does it right. Men have faced the unknown before, but I believe no man has ever faced what awaits them in Crater 101. Oh, Carol Nastro. Carol Merrill. Crater, crater number one. Take the box. It's just over this ridge. SIG. Stop the moonmobile. Look. It's a Tupperware party. Giant vacuum cleaner that puts out dust. Well, it answers one question how to get in. You mean real going the same way? Yes, Lieutenant. Let's get into the moon tractor. Disguised as dust balls. I found being a dust bunny can get you into a lot of places. I can see the spotted. string. <laughs> We've got to knock out that control vehicle. They're going to attack. Stubbing bubbles. Turn green. Man the <laughs> missile gun. Look out, Captain Blue. 
You can see what they do to a bathtub. There's another. Swerve. Zig. Can you see the control vehicle? There's so much dust. There it is. Dead ahead. Fire. Missed. Don't lose sight of it. It's like a tractor pull, kind of. <laughs> They'll turn, turn the moon into a giant mud pit. We're stuck. Look, it's coming back. Keep trying. It's no good. It won't budge. It'll smash us to pieces. There's a the control vehicle. Yes, popcorn. Yes, please. You have one chance, Lieutenant. Don't miss. Do I get a coconut? If we ever get out of this, Lieutenant, I'll buy you all the coconuts you can eat. Lunarville 6 to Luna Tech. What is your position? I am about to cross the lunar horizon. Right. Remember, set the detonator for 12 o'clock SET. I am sorry, Earth Woman. Earth Woman? The detonator is already set for 10. Two hours earlier than Spectrum think. Fraser, listen to me, Fraser. Captain Scarlet is below the lunar horizon. You cannot contact him. He will die in Crater 101. Lieutenant Green's freed the lunar tractor. We're ready to go. Good. And there's Fraser and the atomic device right on time. Tell Lieutenant Green to get back in here. SIG. Captain Scarlet to Lunar Tank. Come in, Fraser. I'm about to release the atomic device. Right. We'll start the investigation. Good luck. I'm going to put the rest of the popcorn in your head. And goodbye, Earthman. I was hoping you'd say that. I'll save it for later. Traction, traction, action, action. Power, power, power. I bet they're all tankful they got out of that. <laughs> all right, put on the Good one, Carl. Sorry. Radio check. Captain Blue, spectrum is green. Lieutenant, Give us a radio SIG. Let's go in. Yeah, sure. Through the wall? Through the wall. I don't want to come around. It's indescribable. Start the cameras. Let's move on. Those Mysterions sure know how to decorate. Psychedelic. Kind of like Peter Max was there. Purple he's all easy, in my Lieutenant. brain. You're forgetting the low gravity. Yes, I G. There's no radiation. What's the temperature? Normal. 
Gravity and pressure fluctuation negative. No pressure fluctuation. No trace of any X-ray or infrared emission. Well, nothing so far. Where's Lieutenant Green? Lieutenant Green? Lieutenant Green. They got him. He's in the storm. Over there. Lieutenant Green, what's wrong? Those lights. They're hypnotic. Oh, make a bunny shadow. He doesn't like bunny shadows. Another few seconds and we would have all been transfixed. I couldn't look away. I tried, but I just couldn't. Let's move on. And stay together. Good. Fraser is a mister. Are you sure, Controller? He told me as much himself. He set the detonator for 10 o'clock instead of 12. What? Or isn't there some way we can warn Captain Scarlet? No, he's out of radio range. Radio range? Isn't that a kind of stove? Stay back. What is it, Captain? Some kind of weightless area just in front of where you're standing. He's going up to the Jetsons apartment. <laughs> Astronaut Captain Lake. Captain Scarlet, can you hear me? Yes. It's all right, you can come up. I think I found the heart of the complex. Sure helps you float when you've got threads on you. Through there. That's right. Look. What is it? There's only one way to find out. Shoot it. <laughs> Be careful, it's the worst special effect yet. This could be trouble. Place your bets, place your bets. They're trying to legalize gambling on the moon. My instrumentation's gone crazy. This is it. It's a lottery. A power source. Get as many pictures as you can. We've got to work fast. Remember the 12 o'clock deadline. Well, a rocket's the only thing fast enough to get there before that bomb explodes. An unmanned rocket. Could it work? There's the slimmest chance, but it's the only one. Right, we've got enough pictures. What time is it? 9.32 SET. Good. Two and a half hours to detonation. We've plenty of time. Plenty of two and a half hours. The rocket is ready on the launch pad. Start the countdown immediately. Good, another countdown. <laughs> All we can do now is hope. Well, you sure can't Five, act. four, three, two, two one. one. Lift off. Carried away. I'm going to try and remove the power source. Take it easy, Captain. I could sure use a good commercial right now.
see anything, Captain Blue? Yes. It's an unmanned space probe. An old CB-29. It must have been launched from Lunaville 6. But why an obsolete CB-29? Unless... Maybe it's some kind of message. Or a warning? Nah. Now, what was it? To Linda Nolan. The CB-29 Neptune probe, July 10th, 2058. We made it. Ahead of schedule. Can you see a connection? That's schedule. Ahead of schedule. Schedule. o'clock SET. Hmm. The bomb. It could mean the bomb will explode ahead of schedule. schedule. Lieutenant. Captain Blue, check the detonator timing on that atomic device. SIG. Lieutenant Green, get back in the moon mobile. But Captain, that's an order. Yeah, no, check out every license number on the planet. Get moving. SIG. SIG. I think it's a Johnny Quest thing. Yes, IG. Oh, that's it. Captain Scarlet, the detonator's set for ten. Get out of there. The whole crater will go up in five minutes. Get into the moon, Mobile. I'll follow as soon as I can. How can a crater go up? No, at least get the cameras to safety. Captain Scarlet, you know I'm right, Adam. Do as I say. Spectrum is green. That would just make it level. Less than two minutes to detonation. Just pretend you're using one of those cranes at the state fair. We're safe here. Any sign of Captain Scarlet? No, nothing. The crater. It went up. He didn't make it. He just didn't make it. Look. What I got. I tended to doubt it myself. Hmm. Well, gentlemen, I'm glad to be able to tell you Mission accomplished. Our reconnaissance shows it was a complete success. That's great news. It means that the Mysteron powers of reconstruction are somehow connected with this power source. We must take it back to Earth at once. Well, I'm afraid it's goodbye. Thank you for no, everything. No, I'm afraid it's a goodbye, diamond. Captain Scarlet. I almost forgot. Your lucky charm. I'd take it as a favor if you'd keep it. Thank you. Let's I go, think Adam. she likes him. Too bad she lives on the moon. A brave man. And so good looking. I suppose so. I didn't think you'd notice. I'm going down to the lounge. Let me know when Captain Scarlet makes contact with Dr. Kernet and launch Angel One to escort them back to Cloudbase. Yes, Ken. Angel One, immediate launch. SIG. Proceed to grid reference G17 and await arrival of Captain Scarlet and Dr. Kernitz. You will escort them back to Cloudbase. This is a maximum security operation. SIG, Lieutenant Green. I shall take good care of them. I know how important this mission is. Sounds like she knows. Yep. Nice stereo. <coughs> you okay? Me. Popcorn. <coughs> the 
T94, compact disc. Lieutenant Green, I'm outside the Nash Institute of Technology. The helicopter reports you are not followed. Proceed, Captain Scarlett. Dr. Kernitz is expecting you. S.I.G. Excuse me. Yes? Captain Scarlett has arrived, Dr. Kernitz. Good. Tell the captain I'm ready to leave immediately. The doctor will be with you in a minute, sir. He says he's ready to leave at once. Good. Thank you. Captain Scarlett to Yellow Fox. Proceed to rear entrance of research center. Spectrum is green. Ready, Doctor? Ready. You have everything? Yes. tanker? I think you'll find it comfortable. After you, Dr. Kernitz. Thank you, Captain. They're gonna get tanked. Tanked, Joe. Good one, Crow. What's it? Dr. Kernitz and I have rendezvoused with the Yellow Fox. ETA at the airport, minus 20 minutes. SIG. A Spectrum helicopter will overfly the route to the airport. An Angel aircraft will escort your plane to cloud base. SIG, Lieutenant Green. Very ingenious. We can drive in comfort and complete secrecy. That's right, Doctor. Spectrum have found the tanker very useful. Kind of like a Yugo. Comfort and complete secrecy. Hmm. Well, maybe not. Yeah, we could use another countdown right about now. Well, Doctor, what are the results of your test? I know the danger you went through, Captain Scarlet, to get the Pulsator. But I can tell you now, it was worth it. Because of your efforts, I believe we will be able to communicate with the Mistrans. Let's hope they will listen to reason. This is the voice of the Mistrans. We know. Oh, you never move your lips. Well, Colonel, the Mistrons plan to destroy Cloud Base. Yes, Captain. It's incredible they should choose such a time. But as this base is already on maximum security alert, there's very little more that we can do. Except to ensure that security arrangements are carried out. Yes, Colonel. No one will be allowed to leave or board Cloud Base and the entire craft will be subjected to hourly searches with Mr. On Detectors. This is already being done, sir. Good. Any plane, rocket, or satellite approaching within a 50-mile radius will be attacked. The only exceptions to this are the aircraft bringing Dr. Kernitz and Captain Scarlet to cloud base. Spectrum have done a good job on the transmission circuits, Colonel. Thank you, Doctor. It was built exactly to the circuit diagrams you sent us and has been fully tested. Well, let's get on with it. Allow me, Doctor. Certainly, Captain. Did it? Good. 
Switch on the primary circuits. Right. Pulsating. Just as it did in the Mysteron complex on the moon. Yes, Captain Blue. With the aid of the photographs you and Captain Scarlet took, it was relatively easy to simulate the exact conditions inside that complex. Is it going to work, Doctor? I am certain it will. Give me a couple of hours to check the secondary circuits and the frequency, and for the first time, you, Colonel White, will be able to speak directly to the Mr. Ots. What time is it, Lieutenant? 1100 hours, sir. 13 hours to midnight. Captain Blue is here, Colonel. Anything to report, Captain Blue? Have the Mistron detectors revealed anything? No, Colonel. The whole base has been checked out. And except for the diamond pulsator, of course, there's nothing. The Mistron said they would destroy Cloud Base at midnight. We must maintain a constant vigil. There is little else we can do. Well, let's hope the Mistrons listen to reason when you talk to them. Yes. A transmission. The future of the world could well depend on that. Fifteen seconds to transmission. All circuits, A-OK. -okay. Ten seconds. Stand by, Colonel. Spectrum is green. Five, four, three, two, one. Transmission. This is Colonel White, Commander-in-Chief of Spectrum, speaking on behalf of the peoples of the Earth to the Mistrons on Mars. I would like to recall man's first survey expedition on the surface of your planet. The Martian exploration vehicle landed to try and discover more about the universe we live in. Inside, three men from Earth, nervous, alert. And then they discovered your complex. Travelers have arrived. They too have a curiosity about the universe we live in. We must welcome them. Familia would do him good. Obviously hostile. Okay, Lieutenant, let him have it. And they're calling them hostile? Then, for the first time, men from Earth witnessed your amazing powers of reconstruction. Seems like they understand weather pretty good, too. Mm-hmm. Looks like a Barbie dream house. Earthman, this is the voice of the Mysterons. I think it's the voice of Lurk. Your people will pay for this act of aggression. Hmm. on your complex was wrong. We admit it and deeply regret it. But we on Earth want you to know it was done out of fear and was not a deliberate act of aggression against you. I know that you can hear this message and hope you will answer so that together we can find a way of ending this war of nerves between us. On behalf of the world government and all peoples of the Earth, I offer you the hand of friendship. I hope that it will be accepted.
You know, that's really a pretty good crow. Oh, thank you, Joe Hudson. Mm. I can see it in every, oh, we're on, okay, we're on. Hey, Cambot, um, this is a thing we're all working on, all of us, me and the puppet bots, is uh, a thing you do where you trace your hand with a crayon, bring it in, that's good, Cambot, and then you put a little beak on it and little feet, and all of the, me and all the robots did it. Um, let's see, well, let's look at yours, crow. You see, he, bring it in, uh, can you see that? Yes, Hall bring it, Jetson. Bring it in on I, crows there. I took the liberty of adding radar to my turkey. <laughs> See, there's the radar down there. And uh, <laughs> Kamba, bring it over to Servo here, and we'll show you Servos. Mm. Yes, sir. As you can see, that uh, it's not very big, so I just like to say that it's very far away. <laughs> That's good, sir. Well, good job. I'm going to go look for some meat now. Okay, some Thanksgiving food. Good idea. Okay, Gypsy. Are you ready to show yours? Huh? Oh, come on. Let's see it. Oh, All right, come on. That's good. That's come good. on. Let's just let us show it, okay? I think. No! Well, I. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. It, no, it's good. I like it. I think you did a good job. There's the head and little feet. And you just made the most beautiful picture, you little monkey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's good. Oh, we got movie sign. We better get out of here. We go through, you go around. <laughs> Get a reply, Colonel? I don't know. Well, I wish they'd hurry up. I can't stand this waiting. Uh, gentlemen, we are forgetting we have a guest. Is there anything I can get you, Doctor? Well, Colonel, would it be possible to see an angel launch? Of course. We'll go up to the promenade deck. We'll be able to hear the Mistron reply anywhere on cloud base. Uh, Lieutenant Green, arrange a demonstration launch. S.I.G., Colonel. S.I.G.? Spectrum is green. It means everything is fine. S-I-R, spectrum is red, means the opposite. This way, Doctor. Angels one, two, and three, prepare for launch. Here we are, Doctor. The Angel aircraft are below. We have five pilots, codenamed the Angels. One is always stationed in the leading Angel aircraft, ready for immediate launch. Angel one. Immediate launch. Two more are waiting in the amber room below deck on constant alert. Ready to come up the elevator into the other aircraft. The remaining two are off duty. They work a round-the-clock rotor system. Here come angels two and three now. From Lazy Boy to Lear, Jordan. Three. Three minutes. Immediate launch. Magnificent. A truly wonderful sight, but also very practical. It means we can have our aircraft fully operational at 40,000 feet in a matter of seconds. Colonel White. What is it, Lieutenant? Our monitors have picked up a carrier wave, sir. I believe the Mysterons are about to answer your transmission. Well, gentlemen, the moment of truth has arrived. This is the voice of the Mr. Arms. Your message has been analyzed, and it has been decided to allow one member of Spectrum to meet our representative. If you agree, you must carry out the following instructions. Any deviation and the arrangement will be cancelled. The member of Spectrum must not carry weapons or communication equipment of any kind. He will fly on a course of one, two, four magnetic from cloud base's present position. Further instructions will be relayed to you. This is the voice of the Mr. Hmm, I think Check you should that be played on 45, yes, not 33. Well, gentlemen, what are your reactions? It's a trap, Colonel. It means sending an unarmed man into the jaws of death. You're probably right, but I think we must accept. We cannot miss this chance. I have that course reference for you, sir. The only landfall is a large, desolate volcanic area in Greenland. Greenland, eh? An ideal spot for a secret rendezvous. Colonel, I still say the risk's too great. 
Why should we trust the Mr. Ons? I know the risk, Captain, but someone must go. Sir, if a member of Spectrum is to be sent, I'm the obvious choice. I'm ready. Thank you, Captain Scarlet. I'll leave immediately. He likes the jaws of death. It's his show. Joe, how come you never go in the jaws of death? They wanted me, but I passed on it. Completely understandable. Captain Scarlet has just passed the Renvik radar station. Last point of contact. Well, at least you won't have to tip. theme nightclubs. Hmm, the twilight zone is on. Thank you. Will I be able to see you? There is no need for you to see me. I can hear anything you have to say. I have come here unarmed. Your instructions have been followed precisely. You must listen and take back this message to the world. This is the voice of the Mr. Ons. Hear us, Earthmen, and take heed. You started this war of nerves with your unprovoked attack on our complex. I came here to negotiate. You to take our revenge against the Earth. You started a shockwave. Listen to me. The repercussions of which will be felt around the world. Our retaliation. Can you hear me? Will be slow, but nonetheless effective. Please listen. Of life on Earth. That's a recording. By the we will bring the Earth to its knees and finally annihilate it. The pulsator. It's going to explode. in one tiny pulsator. A pulsator? The attack on cloud base. I must warn them. Hmm, things a marionette might say. Hmm.
time is it, Lieutenant? Five minutes to midnight, sir. some sort of signal. It's Morse. Morse? Let me hear it. S C A R L. It's from Scarlet. He says the pulsate is a misdrawn booby trap. 30 seconds to midnight, sir. Captain Oga, this is an emergency. Do exactly as I say. Take the diamond pulsate at the nearest porthole and jettison it. S I G. There will be an explosive decompression in the room. Put on a respirator. Fifteen seconds left, sir. Hurry, Captain Oko. Ten. Nine. Eight. Mm, that's seven, like a good countdown. Six. Five. That's what I often four, say. I know. Three. Two. One. Firstly, I must thank you, Captain Scarlet, and you, Captain Oka. Because of your initiative, Cloud Base is safe. Well, gentlemen, the events of yesterday can now be viewed in retrospect. Our attempt to end the war of nerves with the Mistrons has failed. Obviously, we were unable to convince them of our sincerity. But we will try again. Let us learn from this operation and steel ourselves for the long road which lies in front of us. He's right. Jackie Gleason again. That's the planet Earth, Joel. Well, what'd you think of the movie, Crow? Uh, well, uh, I, uh, uh, I had some laundry to do. You have laundry to do? <laughs> now I do. Oh, no. you didn't <laughs> if you like know what I mean. Uh huh. What about you, Servo? Mm, well, it made me laugh, but most of all, it made me cry. <laughs> That's good. I wish I would have... But it made me think. <laughs> oh yeah, is that right? It made me reflect. <laughs> I wish we could have seen the Mysterions. They never showed them, you know? That made me think too. That's why they were Mysterions, because we never saw them. I suppose. They that probably made me wonder. Ran yeah. out of their special effects budget. Yeah. They saved on actors if they could have them put Puppetry both coordinator, roles. puppetry that made me supervision. Mad. <laughs> Whoa, lots of character voices in that one. Well, time for me to drain my radiator. Okay, Gotta see you around. See you up in the front thing. Oh, okay. We should get going too, Crow. That's right. I have to uh, get some things done. Yeah, go do your puppet laundry.
right, I'm really excited. I just heard that uh, Gypsy and Servo found some turkey in the cargo bay. Here he comes now. He said before we eat, we must observe one Thanksgiving custom of Earth. All oh, right, uh, to give thanks. Oh, to make that two Thanksgiving customs, to give thanks and to pass the checks party mix. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right, okay. Thanks. Enjoy, Joel Hudson. Thanks a lot. Mm. Holly. And Crow, you too. Uh, uh, oh, well, mm. that, never mind. Enjoy. Mmm. <laughs> Here's some for later. Mmm. 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 Here, Bye. Carl, I'll give you some. I'm out of here. Did you get some? No, no, no tasty. <laughs> oh, here comes Gypsy with the main course. All right, hot yeah. turkey and... Yeah. Wait a minute. This isn't the kind of turkey and gravy we have on Earth. Yeah. This stuff's in tubes. What do you expect on a communication satellite? Uh, now, do you want dark meat, white meat, or winter fresh gel? <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. I know. I should be thankful. At least I have somewhat, I mean, something to spend Thanksgiving with. Yes. What are these crackers? Oh, the box said something like, uh, Soylent Green. Mm. Uh, said it's made from people. Oh, they're good, though. <laughs> Mine shaped like Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> we'll be right back with a movie. <laughs>